Hello all, welcome to the Counting Well exam prep live session. Let us start the session with a very inspirational quote. So the quote says, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win and expect to win. With the exams round the corner, we are here to help you revise your concepts before it's too late. So stay tuned to the session and build up the confidence to face your exams. In this session, I will take you through two chapters, exponents and powers, visualizing solid shapes from class eight. Let us see some basics from the chapter exponents and powers. Let us see what are negative exponents. You can see here x to the power minus m, where x is the base and m is the exponent. Here, the exponent is negative. So this is called negative exponent. And x is nothing but any non-zero integer, whereas m is a positive integer. If you take x to the power of minus m, then you can write it as 1 upon x to the power m. For example, if you have 2 raised to minus 3, then it can be written as 1 upon 2 cube or 2 to the power 3, which is equal to 1 by 8. Now, let us see what is multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative inverse of x to the power of minus m is equals to multiplicative inverse of 1 upon x to the power m because these two terms are same. Whenever you are writing multiplicative inverse, you have to take the reciprocal. So taking reciprocal is nothing but interchanging the numerator and the denominator. So x raised to m will go to the numerator and 1 will go to the denominator. And since we can, it is okay to write without 1 in the denominator, we can write it as x to the power m. So the multiplicative inverse of 3 to the power minus 2 is 3 to the power 2. Now let us see what are negative exponents when they are written in decimal numbers in their expanded form. So if you want to write the decimal number 12.56 in the expanded form, we use negative exponents here. So you can see the place value of 1 here is 10, place value of 2 is 2, the place value of 5 is 0 0.5, the place value of 6 is 0 0.06. So the expanded form is written as 1 into 10 to the power 1 plus 2 into 10 to the power 0 plus 5 into 10 to the power minus 1 plus 6 into 10 to the power minus 2. Now let us see how to find the exponent or the negative exponent minus 3 of the base minus 3 by 4. For this, first we will write it as minus 4 upon 3 cube and then we will take the multiplication 3 times. So this will be minus 64 upon 27. Let us see some laws of exponents. So we have mainly three laws here, product law, quotient law, and then we have dividing same powers, exponent zero and multiplying same powers. So here you can see a to the power m into a to the power n is equal to a to the power n plus n. In product law, what we are taking, we are taking the product of two exponents. So the exponents will get added in this case. So for example, if you have 3 to the power minus 2 into 3 to the power of 4, since here the base is same, we'll write the base once and then we'll take the sum of minus 2 and 4, which is minus 2 plus 4 which is nothing but 3 square. Let us see quotient law. Quotient law means we are taking the division of two exponents. So here we have base A, which is same. So we'll take it 
a then we'll subtract or we'll take the difference of the exponents m and n so we have a to the power m minus n for example if you want to divide 3 to the power 5 and 3 to the power minus 2 then you can write it as 3 to the power 5 minus minus 2 since minus minus will become plus so we have 5 plus 2 which is 7. Let us see how to multiply same powers but note that the bases can be different here. So whenever we are multiplying the same powers that is power m then we can write a into b raised to the same power m. So here you can see 3 to the power minus 2 into 5 to the power minus 2. Here the exponent is same. So we'll multiply the bases 3 into 5 and take the exponent minus 2. So we have 15 to the power minus 2. This can be written as 1 upon 15 squared. Let us see how to divide same powers. So we have a to the power m divided by b to the power m. So this can be written as a upon b to the power m. So here we can see the bases are different 3 and 5 and uh, their division is taken and we have taken the power minus 2 which is same for both of these terms. So we have 5 by 3 raised to 2. Let us see what is the property of exponent 0. Any non-zero integer raised to 0 is 1. So here you cannot take 0 raised to 0 because that would be not defined. So if you take any non-zero non integer a, then that integer raised to the power of 0 is always 1. So this integer can be any small number or any large number. So we have 3 to the power 0 is 1. Similarly, 1000 raised to 0 will be also 1. Let us see what is the standard form expressing the smaller number in standard form. We are using here negative exponents. So here the decimal number is 0 0.00001275. So what we are going to do is just count the number of digits after the decimal point. You can see here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 digits after the decimal point. So we are dividing it by 10 to the power 8. And then since the standard form, we, we have this number that is A lying between 0 and 10. That's why we are taking again 1.275 into 10 to the power 3. We are assuming that the decimal point is here and then we are shifting the decimal point to the left by three places. That's why we are multiplying by 10 to the power of 3. And then we use the rule of dividing same powers. So whether we are dividing the same powers or whether we are dividing the same basis, just observe and apply the rule. Here the base is same, not the power. So what we'll do, we'll apply the quotient rule and we will have 10 to the power 3 minus 8. So 3 minus 8 is minus 5. That's why we have got here 10 to the power minus 5 and this is the standard form. Now we can convert the standard form to usual form. So what we are going to do is we will first convert this negative exponent to positive by taking it on the division. Then we will write 10 to the power 7 as the usual form of that number. So we have 1 followed by 7 zeros. And then we will divide this two numbers. So we will get 0 0.00000055. Let us see how to compare numbers in standard form. So comparing numbers in standard form, the number with smaller exponent is smaller. Remember this. And the number with greater exponent is greater. 
For example, here we have two numbers, 1.85 to 10 to the power 11, 3.5 to 10 to the power 13. Observe the exponents here. We are having the exponent 11 and exponent 13. Note that 11 is less than 13. So we have the inequality sign as 1.85 into 10 to the power 11 is less than 3.5 into 10 to the power 13. Now let us compare the numbers 4.9 into 10 to the power minus 8 and 6.07 into 10 to the power minus 14. So you have to compare this exponent that is minus 8 and minus 14. Note that minus 8 is greater than minus 14. That's why the number on the left side is greater than the number on the right. Okay, what will happen or how do we compare when the numbers have the same exponent? For that, we observe the decimal number part and then compare. So here we have the same exponent, 10 to the power minus 18 and 10 to the power minus 18. And here we can see the decimal number part is 6.9 and 4.07. Note that 6.9 is greater than 4.07. That's why we have the number to the left side greater than the number to the right. Now let us perform operation on numbers in standard form. Given is the mass of a cell 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 12 grams. We have to find the mass of 200 such cells. For that what, what we are going to do, we are going to multiply 200 into the mass of each cell. So we have 200 into 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 12. Note that whenever we are multiplying, we are multiplying the decimal number parts. So we have we are 300 into 10 to the power minus 12. Then we are converting the answer in standard form or writing the final answer in standard form. So we cannot leave the answer in this step. We have to convert it in standard form. So we have 3 into 10 to the power 2 into 10 to the power minus 12. That's why we have 3 into 10 to the power minus 10. Note that the number here lies between 0 and 10. So in this way, we can represent the final answer using negative exponents. Now let us see some basics from the chapter visualizing solid shapes. Let us see view of different shapes here. We can see the different combinations of different solids from another solid shape. Here you can see how a cylinder combined with hemispheres are forming a capsule like shape as shown here. Here also you can see how the combination of these two shapes give a different solid shape. Again, we can see how a cone and a hemisphere is forming a new shape. Now let us view different shapes from different angles. You know that a solid can look different from different angles of view. And if you see the front view, the side view and the top view, it can provide a lot of information about the shape observed. Like the shape of a solid or the shapes of the different solids combined if it is the combination of two or more solids. So here you can see if the solid is given as shown here, then if it is viewed from the front side, then you can see the shape as like this. If you view it from the side, from this angle, you can see the side view, side view is shown here. If you view from the top, that is from the upper side, then you can see the shape as shown here. Now, 
let us see one more example if the solid shape given is this then the front side if you view from the front side it will look like this but if you look from the top then it will look like this let us see what is mapping space a map depicts the location of particular object or place in relation to other objects or places so we use maps in our daily lives as well and we are using symbols to depict different objects and places maps also use scales which is fixed for a particular map and the scale can vary from map to map so here you can see one map where the school is located where the park is located where the petrol bunk is located and where is the home so you can see the distance is also marked here in kilometer here it is in meter here it is in kilometer and this is the map it has some symbols used for example here for school the symbol of building is used for park we can see a green structure with some trees are shown for petrol bunk we can see a shape or a, an object like petrol bunk is shown here and then we can see the symbol of a home here now let us see how to interpret a given map so the distance between the pictures represent two landmarks on a map depending on the distance between the landmark so we can know the distance between two places in a city by observing map of the city provided distances are mentioned in the map we can find the landmarks on the road between two places and distance between the places by observing the map map also the distance between two places is mentioned in smaller units mostly in centimeter and the scale is given then you can find the actual distance using the concept of ratio and proportion so see here the distance between hotel and bank is given as 2 cm but the actual distance will not be 2 cm for that you have to observe the scale of the map and then you have to find the actual distance also you can see here in the between you have the school and the symbols used here are triangle for hotels rectangle for ice cream parlor book shops using parallelogram and xerox shops using a vertical rectangle let us see what are faces edges and vertices of polyhedrons first what are polyhedrons these are made up of polygonal regions and the regions are nothing but the faces and these faces meet at edges which are the line segments and the edges meet at vertices which are the points so polygonal regions are faces or faces are nothing but polygonal regions edges are nothing but line segments or where the faces meet vertices are nothing but points or where the edges meet so a polyhedron is a geometric solid in three dimensions with flat surfaces and stra straight edges so it should have a straight edge or the sharp edges here you can see some polyhedrons are given the surfaces highlighted or shaded are nothing but the faces of the polyhedron and the light blue lines line segments shown here are nothing but the edges whereas whereas the sharp points where the edges are meeting are nothing but the vertices let us see what is euler's formula for any polyhedron f plus b equals to e plus 2 so what is f f stands for number of faces b stands for number of vertices and e stands for number of edges for the solid shape given here the number of faces are 6 the number of vertices are 8 the number of edges are 12
Note that if you add F and V, then you will get 14. And if you add 2 to the number of ages, that is 12, you will get 14. That's why for any polyhedron, always you can find the statement. Mathematical statement is satisfied and this formula is called Euler's formula. So in case any unknown quantity is to be found out, when the number of faces or vertices are given and you have to find number of ages for any polyhedron, then you can use Euler's formula. Now let us see some types of polyhedron. First is regular and irregular. A polyhedron is said to be regular if its faces are made up of regular polygons and the same number of faces meet at each vertex. So you can see some examples of regular polyhedrons here. Also, if the faces are made up of irregular polygons or different number of faces meet at different vertices, then it is irregular polyhedron. So the shapes or the solids given here are irregular polyhedrons. Let us see what are prisms and pyramid. So a pyramid is a polyhedron whose base is any polygon and whose lateral faces are triangles with common vertex. So what are the properties satisfied by a pyramid? First thing is base should be any polygon. So here you can see the base is a polygon. Here also you can see the base is a polygon. Also in the third prism, you can see the base is a polygon and the lateral faces are triangles with a common vertex. Now the, the solid shown in the first image, the faces are triangles with common vertex with the tip of that prism. You can see here tip for the second prism as well. So it is made up of one, two, three, four, and five triangles. Next, you can see here for the third prism as well. It has one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. For this, we can have one, two, three, four, four triangles. Let us see what is a prism. So these three are the examples of pyramid. And we were talking about the properties of pyramid. Now let us see what is a prism. A prism is a polyhedron whose base and the top are congruent polygons and other faces are parallelogram. So here you can see the base is a triangle. The top is also a triangle. And they are congruent polygons. And other faces are parallelogram. So you can see there are three parallelograms for the remaining faces. Here also you can see the top and the base are congruent polygons that is squares and the remaining faces are rectangles. Also for here you can see the base and the top are pentagons with five rectangles. So these three are examples of prism. Now let us see what are convex and non-convex polyhedron. So a polyhedron is said to be convex if the line segment joining any two points of the polyhedron is contained in the interior and the surface of the polyhedron. And all the faces of convex polyhedron are convex polygons. So the difference between convex and non-convex is in the case of convex, if you draw any line segment joining any two points of that polyhedron, it is completely lying in the interior or the surface of the polyhedron. And in addition, we can say the polyhedrons are formed with convex polygons for its faces. Now a polyhedron is said to be non-convex if the line segment joining two points is not contained in the interior and the surface of polyhedron. So here you can see a line segment which is joining two points and it is lying outside of the surface of the polyhedron. 
Now let us see classification of prism and pyramid. So based on the shape of its bases, we can classify them as triangular based prism, square based prism, pentagonal based prism. Here you can see the bases are triangles. Here the bases are squares. Here the bases are pentagons. And for pyramid, you can see the base is a square. Here the base is pentagon. Here the base is hexagon. That's why it is square based pyramid, pentagonal based pyramid and hexagonal based pyramid. Let us see some tricks for the exam. For the chapter exponents and powers for fast calculation, you have to learn the squares and cubes of numbers from 1 to 10. So you have to learn like square of 4 is 16, whereas cube of 4 is 64. Square of 9 is 81, whereas its cube is 729 and so on. Next. Whenever you are solving complex expressions using law of exponents, it is always good to write the base of the exponential numbers as prime numbers or as a product of their prime factors. So how you will write 2 as a product of prime factors? You will write 2 square into 3 and then you will take the power 4. In this way, you can easily solve by applying the laws of exponents, that is product law, exponential law. Now, let us see, while forming standard form of small numbers and large numbers, where we are using negative exponents and where we are using positive exponents. So, for example, you have 8 followed by 9 zeros. In this case, you cannot find a decimal point, okay? If it is there, you can assume it is on the right side of the last digit zero. So if you shift this decimal point to the left side by eight, nine places, then you can write it in X standard form as eight into 10 to the power nine. Now consider zero point zero 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 zero. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 8. What is its standard form? You can see 8 is preceded by 9 zeros. Means before 8, there are 9 zeros. But its standard form is not 8 to the power minus 9. Because you are shifting the decimal point from left side to the right hand side, you can see the number of digits between them is 10. That's why we have 8 into 10 to the power minus 10. So the, you should remember this trick whenever you are using the negative exponents. Now let us evaluate powers with negative exponents. Students will get confused like there is a power and it is negative power. So how you will evaluate it if the power is negative? Don't worry, you have to write it by converting the negative exponent to the positive one by taking the reciprocal of the base. So the base here is 2 and its reciprocal will be 1 by 2. So here 2 to the power 3. So minus 3 is now converted to 3. So we have 1 by 8 and in this way, you have evaluated the negative exponent 2 to the power minus 3. Let us see the trick for addition of exponential numbers in standard form. To add or subtract them, make sure they are written with the same power of 10. Because if you write in the same power, you can easily find the final answer in the standard form. So here you have 7 to the power 10 raised to minus 3 and 10 to the power minus 5. You can see the 
powers are not same here. So how we are going to write? We are going to write it as ten to the ten into seven into ten to the power minus three plus zero point zero three into ten to the power two. We are assuming that the decimal point is to the right of three, and we are shifting to two places to the left side. So we are having ten to the power two, and we have ten to the power minus five. Since the base bases are same and the exponents are different, we can use the product rule. So we have ten to the power minus three by taking the sum of two and minus five. Now, since the exponents are same here, or we have the same powers of ten, that's why we can add the decimal number parts. So we have seven point zero three into ten to the power minus three. Let us see trick for identifying polyhedrons for visualizing solid shapes. so while identifying polyhedrons we need to observe the following check whether the given shape is 3d made up of flat faces and straight edges or not for example we can see for the first set of polyhedrons or for the first set of solid shapes we have flat surfaces and straight edges but for the second set of 3d shapes the spaces are not flat so here you can see the face is curved here also the face is curved or we cannot find which are the flat faces so the first set of 3d shapes are polyhedrons and the second one is not let us identify different shapes that form a given shape in a combination of solids to identify the shapes combined look for the known shapes so what will be the known shapes it can be square it can be pentagon hexagon decagon triangle etc now to check whether a polyhedron is regular or irregular we have to check whether all the faces are regular polygons and then you have to check whether the number of edges meeting at each vertex is same or not now identifying different views of solids to identify them we need to visualize a solid from the top front and side respectively viewing a solid from the front is to view from this angle and hence the front view is shown as this next the side view will be like this and then if you view it from the top then it will be like this let us see how to find number of cubes forming a solid to find the number of cubes combined to form a solid shape you have to view the solid from different angles and then count the cubes which will be hidden from the view so here you can see in the solid above there are only three cubes visible one is this one this is second one and this is third one but one cube is hidden that is the hidden cube also which will be below this cube so there are four cubes now let us see what are the some common mistakes that student do note that minus 3 square is not same as minus 3 raised to the power 2 the expression minus 3 square means you have to multiply two threes together 
and then you have to take the negative of that answer. So minus three square is nothing but minus of three square, and three square is nothing but three multiplied twice. So you have minus of nine. So the final answer is minus nine. So do not mistake mistakenly take as minus three square equal to minus into minus three, which is not the correct way. Also, minus three square means to multiply minus three together. So you can see minus three square is nothing but minus three multiplied twice. And you know we have in the product same sign, so we have a positive result here. So minus three square should not be taken as minus of three into three, which is minus nine. So this is not the correct way of finding the answer. Also, four to the power minus two is not same as minus four square. We saw how to evaluate this. Four to the power minus two is written as with positive exponent by taking the reciprocal of the base four. So, four to the power minus two is one upon four square. So it is one upon sixteen. But minus four square is nothing but Four taken twice, or uh, four taken twice in the product, and then minus sign of that answer. So four square means multiplication by four two times. In the same manner, four raised to minus two means division by four two times. So here you can see the correct way of finding the answer. let us see some common mistake that students do when they are finding the standard form of small numbers to find the standard form of large numbers it is easier because we are using positive exponents and we have large number as shown here like 8 followed by 90 so you can simply write as 8 into 10 to the power 9 but what if if you have a very small number 0. Nine times zero and then eight. Then what will be its standard form? Will it be eight to the power eight into ten to the power minus nine? No. It will be eight to the eight taken product with ten to the power minus ten. Now let us see how to add two numbers expressed in standard form. For that, make sure the two terms means you can see here there are two terms. If this is the first term, this is the second term, and we are taking addition of these two numbers. So make sure these two numbers have the same power of ten. So first of all, we are writing two hundred ten to the power minus five as it is. And we will try to convert the number in the second term with the same power minus five. So this will be written as zero point zero three into ten square into ten to the power minus seven. Now here you can see the bases are same. That's why we will add the exponents by taking the product rule of exponent or by applying the product rule of exponent. So we have two point zero three into ten to the power minus five. Next, let us see what common mistake a child may do when he is or she is finding the actual distance between two places when the scale is given. For example, here the map is given for school, ice cream parlor, book shop, petrol bung, and hospital. You can see the distances are marked in centimeters, and also the scale of the map is given as. One centimeter is hundred meter. So when you can see two centimeter is, it is not the actual distance. The actual distance is two into hundred. That is two hundred meter. So we have to convert the given distance in the map according to the given respective scale. So here you can see the scale is one centimeter is hundred meters. 
Now to find the distance between the hospital. So hospital and petrol bung. We cannot say directly that the actual distance is 4 cm. We cannot represent the actual distance in a map since it is a larger unit. So we cannot show 4 meters in a piece of paper or 400 meters in a piece of paper. That's why we are representing it using a suitable unit. Okay, so we need to convert the distance 4 cm according to the given respective slope. The actual distance can be found as 100 meter is represented by 1 cm and the distance given is 4 cm. So we are taking 4 into 100 which is 400. That's why the distance between the hospital and petrol bung is not 4 cm, it is 400 meter. And usually we represent distance using kilometers. So 400 meters is 0.4 kilometer as one kilometer is 1000 meters. Let us see how to identify polyhedrons. As I told, you have to observe the flat surfaces and straight edges. So whenever you find any curved space or curved surface, then it is not a polyhedron. Let us see some exam tips. Practice a variety of questions from NCRT test books, exemplar other test books and from previous era questions as well because this will help you to expertise in some kind of problems and you will get a lot of confidence. Also, you have to note down all the definitions and properties separately because whenever you are solving any problem, you have to apply some suitable properties. Then you have to avoid calculation mistakes, especially when you are finding the actual distance in a particular map between the two objects or between the two landmarks. Then you have to be thorough with the laws of exponents, whether it is quotient law, product law, or multiplying same powers or dividing same powers, or whether the bases are same. Also, you have to draw a rough figure to represent the question. So what will it do, it will help you to identify the property to be applied. You have to identify the properties that needs to be applied or checked. Also read the given question carefully and understand it. Check if you have answered all the questions correctly. I hope this session was helpful and if you want to quickly revise your concepts, practice some extra sums and also take a quick test then counting well exam prep kit is here. Counting well exam prep kit lets you quickly glance through the major concepts of your chapter. You can also glance through the solved examples, practice questions and chapter assessments. You will also understand the tips and tricks, common errors that you make etc. Over 75,000 students plus counting well for their mass learning and even without the exam prep kit, they can learn every day on the app by diving deep into every chapter. You can download the app from the app store or play store. Also stay connected to our channel counting well and learn more tricks and tips and ways to avoid the common mistakes. We will be revising the chapters, lines and angles, practical geometry from class six, sorry, from class seven in our next session. That is tomorrow on 9th February at 6.30 p.m. Well, see you in the next session until